All right, guys, so I've been asked a ton of times on if we should dye the tips of your, your baits. So we're going to go over three baits today. We're going to go over white fluke, which I'm going to show you guys up close here in one second. We're going to show, of course, the Senko and a brush hog. We're going to be underwater footage of all three of these baits. I'm going to show you guys real quick inside how I'm dyeing them and how much I'm actually dyeing of whatever kind of product it is. And you guys can apply it to basically any type of style. But if I'm going to dye anything, it's basically going to be these kind of three baits. So go ahead and get that close up and then we'll head outside and uh, knock out the underwater footage. This is a Lake Fork Tackle Magic Shad 5 inch Senko and a Baby Brush Hog. So I'm going to dip these real quick for you all and show you how much you need to actually dip on them because you can dip too much. To be honest with you, a lot of people might dip too much and I've, I used to do it too so I'm going to show you guys right now. Now I don't really think too much into this. This is just stuff I got at Walmart. I really don't even remember the name of it. To be honest with you, the labels came off. A lot of people ask me about JJ's Magic and all that, and uh, I, like you guys should know, I don't promote products unless I believe in them. All right, so, so on this one, you really just want to kind of get this tail right here. So you see the difference in non-dipped and dipped? That is literally as much as I would dip on this tail. It's, just don't get this dip and dye stuff on your boat, or try not to, or on your clothes. Now on the Senko, it's almost like, almost like a minimal type thing. You really can't even notice a difference until you put the bait in the water, unless it's white. That's as much as I would do on a Senko. That right there is as much as I would actually dip a Senko. You see the tip is just done? That's what she said. On the Baby Brush Hog, it's real simple. You just want to get these. That's all, that's all you want to do. This is probably the one that I dip the most. I don't think I throw a Baby Brush Hog without them being dipped, to be honest with you. Now, like I said, it's going to be kind of difficult to notice inside. But when you stick it in the water, it should be a noticeable difference. See the difference right here? Just, I mean... Murky water, super clear water. So let's go outside and I'm gonna show you guys real quick on what it looks like actually underwater. All right guys, so the first one we're gonna start off with is just a plain Jane, um, nothing added, baby brush hog. This is Texas rig, of course, and it's on the bottom as you can see. And all I'm gonna do is work it like I would a Texas rig, just kinda pop my rod tip. Just popping the rod tip right now, back to me. I mean, like, if, we're, if you're in, like, super clear water, then there's really no need to, to do the tail, right? I mean, it looks really good underwater. Let's pitch it out there one more time. Now I'm going to kind of just drag it back. Keep in contact with the bottom at all times. That's what I'm trying to do right now. I mean, as you can see, you don't really see a lot of movement in the tail when you're dragging it back. I think it's more, like... This is kind of what it would look like on a Carolina rig because I'm dragging it sideways. Now, I'm, I, I think the popping motion is probably the best or the dragging it back like this and maybe popping it a few times. I think the initial descent is probably the best, best thing on that as you just saw right there. The initial descent is just crazy. With the whirly little tails going down, that probably looks the best when it comes to like flipping inside a brush or log piles, that kind of stuff. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna bring it back and I'm gonna pop it every once in a while. So that right there should show you guys you probably want to work this kind of a bait coming back at you and then popping it every once in a while. I'm going to go grab the, uh, go grab the one with the die real quick and I'll be back in a second. All right guys, so now I'm getting back with the one with the die. I'm only going to pitch this one a couple times. I think the best way to pitch this bait is to bring it back and then back to you. So that's how I'm going to start off with this one. All right. Yeah, I mean you can see with the die on, the, on those little twirly tails, I mean, it does a lot. Look at that. It, like, you can just see it, so you can see the twirly tails. Curly tails, twirly tails, same thing, right? You can see them, like, that's what stands out to me on this entire thing. When this bait, and of course, this is in a pool, so the water's super clear. I'm gonna drag it back to me, just because I did it with the other one, see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. You just take it, maybe like pop it a few times on the, on the, yeah, doesn't look bad. So, like I said, I have more confidence with this bait if I do this to the uh, little curly appendages. <sighs> All right, so I'm gonna go put on the fluke and we're gonna start a course with the non-dipped and then move into the dipped. I'll be back here in a second. All right guys, so I got the, uh, the Lake Fork, the little uh, 
fluke action. I don't really remember the name of this bait, but it's, it's a white fluke. But I like this tail on it. it. It's got like more of a paddle than the other ones. The other flukes, if you know, are like, they're kind of split like this, and this one actually looks like a paddle. So I'm throwing a weightless on a 5 uh EWG. So the descent rate on this thing is very, very, very slow. Oh my gosh. But look at that action, holy crap. All right, so the descent rate on this thing is, well, I would say it's slow at best. That is absurdly slow. I'd probably throw this thing a little bit more mojo rigged, but we're gonna throw a weightless right now. But look at the action on that thing. This is a killer bait. Look at that, oh my gosh, crazy. I'm gonna go grab the one with the dip tail, and I'll be right back. All right, so we got the uh, Lake Fork Fluke here with the dip tail. I mean, like, look at that tail. This should look crazy underwater. Yep, look at that. The descent rate on this thing is just almost just utterly too slow to me. I like the mojo rigged version of this. I can't, I can't move something this slow. But I mean, look at the action when you twitch it. Not when you hit the water. But look at this action when you twitch it. <laughs> it just looks like a crazy dying shad. That is amazing. I gave it to you, Lake Fork. Tackle, you did a really good job on this one. It's a really good bait. I'm gonna flip it out there one more time. Let this thing descend in front of the camera so you guys can really see this thing. This should be a pretty good shot. I mean, just look at that thing just descend. It kind of like does this on the way down. Like, look at that. That is just, God, it's beautiful. Now pop it a couple times and really kind of just let it sink and let you guys see what it looks like, what a dying shad would really look like. Look at that. Oh, it's dying. Oh my God. Look at that. Woo. Really good job, Lake Fork Tackle, on this, this fluke. So we're gonna switch to the Senko. Everybody knows I use Senkos like crazy. I'm gonna throw a weightless with the 5 aught EWG, and then we're switched to a weightless, of course, with the dip tail. I'll be right back. All right, all right, all right. So we got the uh, weightless Senko here, watermelon red. Everybody knows I use these like a lot. I've got a video literally just on Senkos, but I'm gonna flip it out there for you guys that are new to the channel. The way the Senko, the way it's supposed to go down, it's wobbling like this, just like it is right now. I mean, look at that. You cannot beat that. God, it's so good. Anyway, I'm gonna twitch it back like I would. Oh, this is how I work my Senkos. I just twitch my rod tip, let it fall, and it, when it falls, it goes, does this little crazy, like, look at that. You can't beat that. Oh, it's so good. Do I need to flip it out there one more time for you guys? Yeah, I think so. And you just can't, like, look at that. Oh, so beautiful. If you guys don't use this bait, you really need to start using their baits. Gary Yamamoto custom baits are like some of the best stick bait. They are the best stick bait in the world. Like look at it just suspend right now. It's just, oh, it looks so good. Okay, so I'm gonna go grab the one with the uh, chartreuse dipped on the tail. I would only use this if it's in murky water. If it's not murky water, then it's gonna be a straight up no dipped tail, or no, no dip, no dye on the tail of the Senko. So I'm gonna go grab it and be right back. All right, so I wanna throw it out there. You know, you can, you can use the dye on the tail, like say if you're on a pressured pond, it doesn't, have to be uh, it doesn't have to be muddy or anything like that, but if it's like a pressured pond and you, or a lake or anything like that and you, you think the bass haven't seen it with the, the tail dipped, then go ahead and dip the tail, give it a shot. It's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt to try. I'm gonna throw this one out there, a little five inch Senko with a dipped tail. Let's see what it looks like. And once again, the, the action on a Senko on the way down is just killer. You can't really beat it with a stick bait. I'm gonna go ahead and twitch it like I normally do. Just, like look at that. You can see the tail. I mean, the tail does, it's really, it adds that little bit of extra oomph to it in dirty, muddy water. So I'll flip it out there one more time. You know, a lot of people don't have confidence in these Senkos because it's just, it's kind of a, I would say almost like a scary bait to some people because it's just a stick and it seems too simple to work. Remember, keep it stupid simple, guys. All right, let's go ahead and just twitch it back. Like, look at that action. You can't, you can't really beat that with a Senko. It just, it just looks kind of natural and the way it dies is natural. Well, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I mean, do you think dye does a lot? Do you think it doesn't do a lot? Is there a certain type of bait you think you'd like to see with dye on it? I might give it a shot. 
in the water if you guys want me to. <clears throat> Let me know if this video helped you guys out. Leave a thumbs up if it did. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Um, you know, videos every single day. Every single day, guys. We're fishing three days this weekend, and then it's off to Florida to fish with Black Dip H, and one rod, one reel for an entire week. Five days of nothing, just bass fishing, saltwater fishing, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, guys, I'll see you guys later, and thanks for stopping by and um, watching the video.